Don't go to the comments section right away, I know exactly what you're going to say. Red, you do realise this homebrew is being lawfully sold online as a cart. Of course it will work on hardware, you dumb prit stick. And to that I say, yeah, I know, I have the game right here. But what if you don't own this, and you only own a flash cart? How far can this game go on other Atari variants? Do regional woes come into anywhere? Will my cat ever stop scratching as soon as I start recording? Sippy the Porcupine, a totally not Sonic the Hedgehog game created for the Atari 2600. You know the Atari, popular for the right reasons, and the… well, saying wrong would be an understatement. Nevertheless, Sippy has been known to be a technological achievement, and has impressed many on how well this runs, which I have here the PAL and NTSC Woody consoles to help prove that statement. I've had most of these modded to deliver an RGB signal, so you can witness the sharpest pixels YouTube's compression will allow. But it's not a hardware video without grabbing some more revisions, which will get bigger as we go along. But I had to stop somewhere, because my wallet can only take so much of a beating. This is my most expensive hardware episode to date, and here's one reason why. Stick to the end to find out the details on winning an Atari 2600 and a legit copy of the game. I, I, I do this to myself. No, honestly, that's the noise it makes. So I ordered a reliable third-party PSU and flicked the power switch on my NTSC Woody Atari using the Harmony Encore flash cart. At first glance, you would get away with saying it's an original game. It kind of reminds me of Sonic, but no, this is someone diverse, with a fine new exp- Okay, it's a Sonic clone. But my word, it's a jolly good clone. I'm going to stop saying clone now, because I'm being quite the hypocrite. He looks pretty decent for what this 70s appliance can handle, that only being one colour per line per sprite. And we have other recognisable badniks, such as the Crab Meat, Buzz Bomber, Motorbug, uh, Mario on wheels? They're all easily taken care of, but my biggest gripe is if you force the screen away, they'll respawn when you backtrack, even if you've demolished them before. This same rule doesn't apply for rings or monitors once collected, so why are the enemies an exception? And trust me, you'll be running into this issue a lot because of the way Sippy leaves the ground. The poor porcupine can hardly jump unless you're taking the run up and then he's able to gain more air, meaning, especially on your first play, you'll be assessing the gap then backing up for your launch. I wish that the longer you held the jump button, the higher he would leap, but that's not the case here. It doesn't take too long to get used to the physics, and it becomes second nature just to speed hurdle at the edge of ledges. However, just be careful as some can lead to your death. You may have noticed that the screen only scrolls horizontally, but have no fear, you can spring your way to the upper floor for extra goodies. There's a bit of pause in between, but hey, I'll take it if it means alternate paths and variety. I also feel safer up here, because it means if you fall into a pit, you descend into the lower level rather than losing a life. Uh, um, most of the time. Yeah, the level design's not the greatest, but to be fair, there's only so much you can do with huge chunks of blocks. Yet, the game manages to incorporate some gimmicks, such as loops, raising platforms, collapsing bridges, self-building bridges... Bob the Builder, you can jog on. Sippy is on the case. What I do like with the zone select screen is that you can choose any stage next, as long as it's adjacent to a completed act. You can also replay zones if you want to, say, rack up some lives before heading towards the boss, because losing here will not only cost you a life, but the antagonist will flee the scene, meaning you've got to catch up with him again. What a dodo! No, honestly, that's his name in the manual. Great work has been put in here to help symbolise their Sonic 1 fights. Except for Aqua Zone where the Mustache Man straight up goes crazy with a GUN! Some of these battles are enjoyable, and some are a lot harsher. Only being able to take one setback is a worrying issue due to no scattered rings, but a pattern can be picked up simply enough to make the bird drop his gem. Collect all five stones, and you end the game by blowing up South Island? 
Yeah, I'm the true villain, dweebs. What you gonna do about it? Now, I ran into a few issues where the porcupine got stuck and vibrated along the walls. Nonetheless, I was able to break free, apart from one time where I was forced to restart the game. But all in all, just as expected, the homebrew ran perfectly. So what happens when we transfer the car to the Power Tory? Power Tory. Pow. Power Tory. Pow Atari. There we go. Oh. 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 Oh, 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 all right, before we panic, this is to be anticipated. If you run any NTSC game on a PAL machine, the colours become corrupted, just as if you loaded a PAL game on an NTSC system. So if you're planning to buy this, or any Atari 2600 game for that matter, make sure you pick the exact region that ties with your console. Because here's what the PAL should not look like. What the heck? I'm genuinely confused. The NTSC looked wrong, but so did PAL. Both of my flashcards produced the same outcome. But here's the crazy thing. If I put the NTSC game back in, it now looks fine. That shouldn't be possible. Even ET has been corrected. See, I was ready to rate this partially. Uh, hang on, hold your horses. But I was thinking, why would they sell a PAL game for a PAL system? Then it's not work. I looked this up online and only saw one other person having the same trouble as me. And they had no replies. But they mentioned their machine was modded with composite. Could it be? For the first time ever in the series, an RGB mod has interrupted with the game? Well, not the game per se, but more the console itself. It appears that putting in a PAL 50 game works as intended. Then, inserting any NTSC game, including Sippy, displays the wrong palette, as expected. But then, swap that for a PAL 60 version that still displays the wrong colours, which should not be happening. But now, all NTSC games have been fixed, which again, should not be happening. And it stays this way until you change the way the Atari thinks, by loading a PAL 50 title. Now all NTSC ROMs break again. So, I had to buy another PAL Atari, but at its stock signal, RF. And this cheap RF to USB device for recording, because I'm going to need it later. So, I tuned in the Atari and oh come on! Now we're getting flashing colours? Even trying a proper PAL game has the same glitch. Welp, time to get the big guns out. Yeah, I'm becoming lazy, I can't be bothered to do B-roll, so here I go. I've connected it to this TV, I'm going to switch it on, and... Oh, there we go, no flashing colours, okay. This confirms that the PAL game on the PAL system works with my PAL TV absolutely fine. So now, I'm going to grab Sippy, yep, that's the uh, PAL one, so that means that's the NTSC. So, I'm going to put that in, turn it on. And in theory, we should get... Are you kidding me? I knew this TV didn't support NTSC, but I would have thought PAL 60 would have worked. But nope, it gets treated the same way as its counterpart. So, I tried my HD TV in the lounge, which still has an analog RF input. However, it also supports NTSC. And hallelujah, we have some answers. Sippy and PAL 60 runs in the correct colors. Whereas NTSC does not, and the console always stays in PAL mode. No funny region switching business caused by Sippy. This is how it's meant to be behaving. I mean, he looks a little worse for wear, but this is RF. We're not expecting miracles here. That confirms it. The RGB mod can get in the way of your experience, albeit for PAL users only. Yet again, we get yeah, shafted. Yeah, 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 let's play the Atari Junior now. This being an American version of the console, I selected the NTSC ROM, and I can confirm all my findings are identical to the first time we played the homebrew. He still runs, he still spin dashes, he still tries to keep the dodo extinct, it's all good. Yeah, not sure what I was hoping to happen there. This is embarrassing. Lights out. Yeah. 
This is the Atari 2600 Darth Vader Edition. A cosmetic revamp to make it look more modern and appealing to the eye, in which I kind of agree. Although the internals remain practically the same. Except when I bought this, it was already modded for composite, so I left it like that. And what do you know, Sippy performs all good. The video quality being composite sits smack bang in the middle of RF and RGB. Alright, alright, we get the picture. We can safely say that all 2600 variants we've analysed cooperate with only one slight caveat so far. But can it withstand the power of the 7800? Oh yeah, this is Atari's third home console, boasting better graphics, beefier chips, but most importantly, supplying backwards compatibility with most 2600 games. Would Sippy get along with this? Well, let's cut to the chase. This is a PAL option I have. I was unfortunately unable to obtain an NTSC one due to it being just too damn expensive. And with me living in Europe and this being RF only, we're getting the same issues as we did earlier. Again, my HDTV comes to the rescue and proves that Sippy will get along just fine with this. Also, he has been blessed with eyesight this time around. And I've just realised we got ahead of ourselves there. We went straight past the 5200. <laughs> <laughs> only released in North America, this was imported from the USA to my studio. And suffice to say, it was not cheap. The design is quite elegant if I say so myself, but this thing is bigger than my head. And that's because of this built-in compartment for the keypads, which is pretty cool if I say so myself. Being RF only and none of my TVs would tune in an NTSC signal, I had to pray that this thing would work. Before we even get there, we have another obstacle to get through that I did not anticipate. Yep, the 2600 carts are way too small. Oh, there's an adapter to make that work? I wasn't aware of that. It can't cost that much to... How much? Ah, oh, here goes. Hey love, I'm going to spend even more money to purchase an accessory to get this solder thing up and running. How does that sound? Sounds like the rustling of divorce papers. So either way, I went... <laughs> After spending even more dosh, it finally arrived on my desk. I did some research on this thing because I got told it would not work on all 5200s. A clear sign is to count how many controller ports you have. Mine having two, I was luckily safe. If you have four, you may need to get an official mod to make this contraption work. But I slid in the new adapter, connected the NTSC cart of Sippy, plugged in a 2600 joypad onto the side, and powered it all up. And even with the USB stick, we have gameplay! Incredibly stripy, colour bleeding gameplay, with a huge amount of button lag, but it was the very best I can do without resorting to pointing the camera at the screen again. Seriously, RF was made for CRTs, but I digress, even after trying the Harmony Flash Cart and the Uno Cart, the 5200's adapter works splendidly with the homebrew. Does Sippy the Porcupine work on real hardware? If you're using an NTSC region console, modded or not, then yes. If you're a PAL user, then remember that video mods will cause palette corruptions and that the stock RF will give you a very high chance of having a black and white picture. The requirements to get this game to seem correct on a PAL machine is way too high that uh, I'm still going to say yes, but just be aware of this admonition. PAL 60 causes more pain than it's worth. I get the idea they're trying to help us get out of that 50 frames per second restriction. But who cares, you just want to win this, don't you? For your chance to win this NTSC Darth Vader Atari 2600 modded with composite and a copy of Sippy the Porcupine manual unboxed, then simply check out the link in the description where you can enter the prize draw. You get an entry for subscribing to the channel, retweeting a specific tweet of mine, blah blah blah, and I will be live streaming this game in two weeks where I will be announcing the winner. You may also get another entry into the giveaway by watching the stream. I hope to see you there. Until then, good luck. And please, wish me luck right now. I've got a huge credit card bill to explain what to the wife. What the heck is this? Seriously, wish me luck.